Welcome to our 500px webinar. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we appreciate you all attending today. Uh, the content team has put together some uh, really great insights for you all and we're really excited to share them. So we're going to get started. Uh, in focus, LGBTQ plus representation within licensing is the start of a series of 500px licensing webinars. So in the future, we will be covering more topics and concepts related to commercial advertising and licensing. Uh, today, we're going to discuss LGBTQ plus representation, and we'll touch on everything from how to expand and elevate your portfolio in regards to diversity, inclusion, shot lists, keywording, and art direction to capture content that is really missing within a lot of uh, licensing and commercial collections. And this will in turn make your portfolio more saleable. However, uh, the absolute and most important insight that we can give you today is how important diversity is to commercial advertising. Uh, each and every one of you have the potential to create lasting change through your practice by intentionally and thoughtfully educating yourself and, uh, you know, knowing the importance of diversity and inclusion and including that into your practice. Uh, so we hope that throughout this presentation, um, you're able to see why we advocate for this type of content at 500px and, you know, see how we all benefit collectively when we can break down barriers and promote acceptance of all kinds. Okay, so I am Logan Bales, and I'm a community manager with 500px. I will be one of three panelists today. I'm a graduate of OCAD University, where I studied photography and art history, and my work experience ranges from um, curatorial practices to developing and executing programming and community outreach of um, all kinds for various galleries, museums, and nonprofits. I'm very grateful to be part of 500px team in this capacity where I get to work with photographers globally and, you know, see and help their growth and learning within this industry. Uh, so I will pass it off to our second panelist, uh, 500px panelist, Devin. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. Webinars are something that 500px team has wanted to do for a long time. So it's very exciting to actually be able to offer this finally. I'm Devin Steele. I am the senior art director with 500px. I've been with the company for a few years and I work with photographers around the globe, uh, developing their portfolios, developing the content they shoot for licensing, offering different kinds of briefs, quests, uh, commercial grants, and uh, just trying to you know, help evolve the visual language of uh, stock photography. And we're also joined today by a 500px licensing contributor, Kyle Coleman. Um, he'll be able to talk a bit uh, at the end of the presentation about his craft and approach to shooting this type of content but we'll get started. Okay, so uh, just a quick PSA. Um, you all have your mics muted. To type a question, we just ask that you type your questions in the chat throughout the presentation. So if something comes to mind and you don't wanna forget it, just uh, type it to us. And at the end of the presentation, we will compile the questions and you know answer them accordingly. Uh, we encourage questions and you, know, you have the 500px team here with an amazing talented contributor giving us his time today. Uh, so ask questions, ask questions that you know are on topics, the presentation, consider um, licensing and portfolio building topics. Um, and we do ask that you be respectful. This is a safe space. And we do know that we will be uh, covering a lot today. So if you want to see the recorded webinar and download the full PDF that you see here today and, you know, have it on hand for the future to refer to it, you can join our 500px uh, licensing discord and you will find it in the channel um, in focus LGBTQ. Thank you, Logan. Um, getting started, we're going to take a look at some stats that we have. Uh, these are pulled from Getty Images Research. They look at both the consumers and buyers. Um, starting off, 63% of consumers buy from brands that represent people like themselves. People like to feel uh, that they can identify with brands, that they can see themselves reflected. They like to see their story told and that they can connect uh, and relate to the different kind of imagery they're seeing in advertising. 71% of consumers say it's important for them that companies they buy from celebrate diversity. So the majority of people do want to see more inclusive and diverse content, not only their own stories being told, but also the stories of others and people who maybe have been uh, underrepresented in the past. Um, research shows that content representing the LGBTQ plus community is on the rise. Um, amongst, you know, 91% of, uh, there's been a 91% growth amongst LGBTQ plus and family content, 270% amongst content depicting non-binary individuals, and 200% amongst the trans individuals. 
And while these numbers are positive, something to consider is that these are coming from a historically very underrepresented space. So while it's positive, there's still lots of room to grow. And beyond that, these aren't just metrics. These uh, are real people. These are really like how people are seeing themselves and able to connect with themselves uh, in you know the world around them and the different kind of media that we're seeing. And so this is a you know an indication that there is being progress made, but there's still room to grow. Um, so 500 PX, uh, you know, we've offered a number of different uh, commercial grants and initiatives throughout the years. Uh, with our commercial grants program, we offer photographers around the world the opportunity to collect a grant of thousand dollars U.S. for developing a commercial shoot around what we feel to be an in-demand or underrepresented category of licensing. Um, with breaking the mold, we kind of take a look at representing the LGBTQ plus community, but we've also done grants around mental health, inclusivity and diversity, technology, uh, female and women empowerment. But through breaking the mold, we've worked with a number of different LGBTQ plus photographers shooting LGBTQ plus content and actually developing some of these uh, blank spots in our commercial collection. Um, with these kind of shoots, we always encourage our photographers to kind of consider three main principles when approaching their shoot, uh, considering the person, uh, the community, and the action. And with that, you know, with the person, you're able to illustrate and kind of uh, add context to who someone is, their identity, through portrait shots, their kind of intimate photos. Um, but then through the community, you can get a sense for the world around them, who they interact with, whether it's friends, family, coworkers, peers, uh, neighbors, um, you know, who do they go to for support? Who are they supporting also? Uh, and then with actions, uh, we encourage people to, uh, photographers to follow uh, their models through actions that they're comfortable with. These are the kind of things that are going to give you moments that feel very relatable. People doing, uh, you know, actions and performing uh, different uh, actions that people can relate to and kind of see from their own lives being reflected in the imagery. And then looking forward to 2023 uh, and onwards, uh, you know, these are the kind of qualities that we encourage photographers to consider uh, bringing to their LGBTQ plus content. We want to see genuine content, content that is genuine. Uh, you know, it's sincerely capturing real moments, uh, authentic portrayals of LGBTQ plus individuals and relationships. It helps break down stereotypes and promote inclusivity, foster acceptance. Um, you know, and as I had mentioned earlier, uh, as consumers want to be able to see content that they kind of see their own story in, they want to be able to relate. So relatable content is key. It allows viewers to easily connect with an image. You know, when you're able to relate, you're empathizing, you're putting yourself in the model shoes, the subject shoes. Photos that have that kind of resonance are more likely to be remembered later on. And that's an essential quality when it comes to commercial photography. Uh, so with that said, documentary style, you know, how do you go about getting the genuine and the relatable content? Uh, you can kind of consider following your models and subjects as if you're like filming a documentary, you know, follow them through things, their everyday actions uh, that they're very comfortable with, things they've done a thousand times before. Um, you can kind of achieve this by taking a step back, going a bit wide. My favorite kind of trick to this is uh, you could shoot someone through a doorway, kind of frame them. It kind of creates an element that, you know, it's a bit voyeuristic. It's a bit like we're spying on a real moment, but it adds that realness. It adds that feeling of authenticity. Uh, it also has the added bonus of typically adding, you know, the wider shots have copy space, which is another plus for commercial licensing. Highlighting uh, community, it's important because, uh, you know, the LGBTQ plus community is an often stigmatized uh, group and they're able to find community, uh, you know, where they can, you know, whether it's through chosen family, um, you know, friendship, you know, the support of other people within the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, it's an important quality uh, to bring to this type of content. And micro moments. Uh, these are kind of, you know, the slice of life, real, relatable, not posed, hyper naturalistic kind of instances. This is what you're going to be capturing if you kind of follow someone through, you know, their daily life and you're kind of just snapping, you know, shots that maybe would be overlooked typically in stock, but actually capture real life in an authentic way. We have a bit of do's and don'ts. Uh, so something you definitely want to do is avoid the cliches. Uh, cliches, it's vital to avoid them because uh, it can perpetuate harmful stereotypes, limit representation, uh, and reinforce biases. So authentic and non-cliched content, you know, it, it conversely will promote inclusivity. It reflects real life experiences and fosters that kind of connection with the audience. Um, you know, it can allow, it can be the difference between making uh, an image relatable versus not relatable. Um, capturing realistic bisexual representation um, even within the LGBTQ plus community, there can be a lot of overlooking the bi community. 
Um, you know, there's such thing as bi erasure in which, you know, bisexuality is considered sometimes to not be as valid as, uh, you know, being gay, a lesbian, or, you know, it's sometimes seen as like a stepping stone between uh, other things when the reality is that, you know, bisexual people, you know, have their own lives, they're confident and proud of who they are. And, you know, we want to see content that actually reflects them in their daily lives. And then as I, uh, the next point says, you know, representing daily life. Again, I'm going to be hitting that uh, nail on the head a lot today. It's, you know, about capturing the real, authentic, relatable content. Um, that's, you know, it not only humanizes your subjects for, you know, uh, viewers, but it like allows uh, the viewer to really connect and have the image resonate with them for later on. Uh, shooting indoors. Uh, we see a lot of at 500BX, a lot of great content of LGBTQ plus people, uh, but I'll, it tends to skew with a lot of outdoor content. And while that's really great and we love the content that we do get and see, mm -hmm. uh, it can kind of create an imbalance in which it can create a sense that not everyone is welcome indoors. And so to combat that, we encourage people to shoot different kinds of situations indoors. It can be a bit trickier because sometimes you need a property release if the location is identifiable, but images like this one on the left, um, you know, a, a couple in, you know, a restaurant in a shopping situation that can be, uh, you know, because it's so underrepresented, it can be a great addition to your portfolio. It can really help uh, progress the narrative. Um, we encourage people to kind of avoid things that are overly romantic. Uh, romance is still like welcome, but, you know, it's not uh, someone's entire life. It's not someone's entire existence. It's just, you know, romantic or sexual situations. So, Content that kind of reflects more of the everyday uh, is preferred. Rainbow washing, which, um, you know, I best explain this as uh, there's a lot of different ways to incorporate the pride flag and rainbow within your photography, uh, but it can kind of work to you for different degrees. Um, you know, for example, if you were to have your model uh, adorn the pride flag as a cape, um, you know, that can work really well for conceptual imagery and hit on a lot of different themes, but it's not really reflective of a person's day-to-day -day life. Uh, it's not how that kind of person would, you know, go to work or walk down the street. So what I always encourage is to use the pride flag or rainbow in, you know, subtler ways that can apply context. So whether it's like a pin, someone's socks, a bag, um, you know, still have it present if, uh, if, if, it, if you want it there. Um, because it can add that great context, but just consider, you know, it's balance within the whole photo. Uh, and then lastly, inauthentic casting. Um, we want to see, you know, models and subjects that are authentic to what they're presenting and representing. So even with like keywording and metadata, we encourage photographers to talk to their models and get like the terms and uh, keywords that actually feel uh, how a person sees themselves and then including that in the metadata so that content buyers who are looking for that authentic kind of content can still find it. So we have a real life ad here for you as an example. Uh, it's an Ikea ad, it's kind of, it's historical. It's from 1994. It was the first TV commercial to feature a gay couple. Um, we're gonna take a moment just to watch it. It's very short, so. Well, you know, we went to Ikea because uh, we thought it was time for a serious dining room table. And we have slightly different tastes. I mean, Steve's more into country. It, it frightens me, but at the same time, I have compassion. <laughs> We've been together about three years. I met Steve at my sister's wedding. Rain. I was really impressed with how just well-designed the Ikea furniture was. He's really into craftsmanship. I mean, these chairs are really sturdy. This table concluded a leaf. A leaf means commitment. staying together, commitment. We've got another leaf waiting when we really start getting along. So. Um, as I said, that was very short, but I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, I do. I love that ad. Um, it's what I love most about it is just like how wholesome the couple is. They're very cute. Uh, they're fun. You know, they're finishing each other's sentences. Uh, you see them going throughout the Ikea showroom, imagining, you know, the furniture in their home, in their lives, you know, how it would, you know, they would use it. And I think that's incredibly relatable. Uh, I think anyone who's been to Ikea, I know myself, uh, as you're going through the showroom, you're doing pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, you know, they say that, you know, they're buying a dining room table, but what they're really buying into is a larger commitment, um, a, you know, a future together. They say a leaf means commitment, but they also even say, you know, they have another leaf for things really, if they really start getting along, uh, which alludes to the idea of starting a family, needing that extra table space for the kids. Um, this is a great ad. It highlights, you know, um, 
a very relatable moment. It's presenting a homosexual couple, you know, for the first time in terms of a TV ad, uh, in a way that a heterosexual couple would be, you know, presented time and time again, um, and creating that kind of relatability and presentation, um, you know it not only is very progressive, but it's also helping to kind of like destigmatize um, the way that people see homosexual couples, especially at the time. Um, so we have a few different shot lists for you that we're gonna be going through. Uh, this one will be highlighting, um, you know, everyday moments, uh, different kinds of situations that you could be shooting on like the micro moment kind of slice of life type uh, side. So families and single people, you know, carrying out their morning routines, packing their lunches, getting ready for work, getting the cool kids ready for school uh, and different kinds of activities. Uh, one of my favorite types of shoots to encourage photographers to do is dinner prep. Um, you know, you can have, you know, there's so many different elements to it, whether it's, you know, chopping the vegetables, preparing everything, cooking it, and then actually sharing the meal, sharing a meal with friends and family, uh, you know, breaking bread with people and kind of sharing a meal is uh, just a very like, uh, traditional and uh, uh, human thing to do uh, that's gone on forever. Uh, it's a great way to you know have shared moments and enjoy each other's company. Uh, so it's a great thing to shoot and include within your commercial portfolio. Uh, capturing hobbies and uh, different kind of activities people take part in, and this is where you can kind of incorporate different. Um, other commercial themes that are very popular right now, whether it's like wellness, self-care, active living, you know, you could show someone doing yoga, you could show someone gardening, um, as well as other kind of like situations like, you know, what does everyone do every day? Uh, you know, different kinds of shopping situations and the different kinds of choices you can make within shopping and retail, whether it's, you know, buying sustainable goods or, you know, buying an energy saving appliance for the home and helping build up your home. We have a gallery here that kind of looks at some of these slice of life moments. Uh, I really like that very first photo on the top left. Um, I think it really captures kind of the micro moment kind of sense where, you know, the model is turned away. It feels candid, like they don't even know they're about to be shot. Uh, we can't necessarily see, you know, what they're handling. Uh, so there's still like, you know, something private between the model uh, that we're like not in on. Uh, it just feels very real. And uh, if you look through the rest of the gallery, you can see other kind of real instances below her, you know, someone who identifies as uh, L like a member of the LGBTQ plus community performing uh, acupuncture at their job, being a professional, being an entrepreneur, uh, people applying makeup, responding to text, painting. Uh, you know, buying uh, stuff online, applying, uh, exploring their city, taking public transit, brushing their teeth, really the sky's the limit with like day-to-day -day life stuff. You can truly follow someone throughout their day and, you know, the next day follow someone completely different and you're going to have, uh, you know, maybe the same kind of situations, but they're going to look very different uh, depending on the person. Everyone kind of has their own way of going about this. And then kind of putting a spotlight on friendship and community, a uh, big part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we have a shot list here. Uh, so encouraging photographers to shoot um, going like friends, going out for lunch, exchanging uh, like, uh, you know, hanging out, having, you know, food at a cafe or restaurant, mature senior couples engaging in clubs and activities, being active, whether it's, you know, recreationally or for leisure. Um, members of a religious organization practicing their faith. This is something that's very often overlooked within LGBTQ plus content. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about this, but there are a lot of LGBTQ plus community members who still have very uh, religious or spiritual beliefs. And there are very accepting and welcoming churches and groups that do uh, welcome them and allow them to practice their faiths. So having content that can like illustrate that uh, can be a great advantage to your commercial portfolio. M moments of connection between different members of the community, uh, the LGBTQ plus community being a, you know, historically stigmatized and marginalized group means that, you know, finding support uh, through chosen family, blended family and alternative family uh, and friendship uh, is an important quality uh, to illustrate within your content. Uh, here's some photos to kind of capture that. We have friends, you know, sitting next to each other outdoors, talking, uh, hands, like to illustrate support. Uh, that's kind of a good example of how, you know, you can use the pride colors in a subtler way with the wristband. Uh, you know, people exercising, exploring, whether it's a date or just friends. Uh, you know, everyone has meaningful friendships and community. Um, so 
there's always the opportunity to kind of take the uh, turn your lens on that kind of content. And uh, even if they're not able to get together, I mean, something I'm sure we've all experienced over the past three years is the growth of video calls, Zoom calls, and remote um, remote kind of like connections. All of that still captures friendship and community. Okay, so a uh, spotlight on LGBTQ plus work and travel. Uh, content focused on workplace settings and in the context of travel are some themes that uh, you guys as contributors should consider. Uh, they are both great ways to layer multiple concepts in your work and hit on more than one theme. And I will expand on that and give an example of it uh, shortly. But uh, a work plays a major part in most people's lives. And uh, while travel advertisements, um, I don't know if you've noticed, are pretty popular. So these are two themes that you either see a lot visually in advertisements and or partake in your own lives. So needless to say, there is a market for them. And we need LGBTQ plus representation in these everyday and popular content types. Um, and to add to this point, we just wanted to share a really interesting study that we came across. Uh, it was conducted by PNG and GLAD, uh, where a group of people who did not identify within the LGBTQ plus community were asked individually about their level of comfortability and acceptance of people within the community. And over a period of three months, this group was exposed to media and advertisements of positive LGBTQ plus content. After the three month period, the same group was asked about their level of acceptance and comfortability, if it changed, stayed the same. And what they found was that overall acceptance levels rose and uh, quite a bit considering the short duration of the study and that the only change that was kind of happening in their lives was passively being exposed to ads and media. So this should be uh, this should come across as pretty uh, you know reassuring for you guys as content um, and commercial photographers and content creators knowing the impacts firsthand. Uh, we also know that a great way to create saleable content is to visualize storytelling and bringing that element to light. Uh, so we do have another ad for you guys. Uh, this was created and run by Indeed, and we felt it was a, a great representation of not only storytelling, but uh, real life obstacles, anxieties, and all the steps and emotions of uh, applying to a job and uh, bringing yourself to the table. So we're just going to play that. Hmm, there we go. Hi. Hi, I'm Taylor. Hi, I'm here for my interview. I'm Dorian and I use the pronouns he, him. Are you comfortable sharing how you would like to be addressed? Thank you for asking. I use they, them pronouns. Great. Oh, I'd love to hear more about your skill set. Sure. I went to school. Yeah, I can uh, feel that anxiety just building up and then that release. I really, really love that ad. <laughs> um, so work and travel themes are great ways to add diversity and there are tons of ways you can expand and get creative in these areas like i mentioned before adding layers to your content so uh transportation is a great example of this uh whether you're riding a bike taking public transit, carpooling, you can capture themes of transportation, work, sustainability, all in one shoot in addition to your diversity inclusion. Adding more layers forces you to you know, be more intentional in your approach. And it also over time uh, trains your eye to see various themes and connections in your daily life more abundantly. Um, interactions within the workplace is another great one. Um, think the different types of workplaces, small businesses, LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus business owners uh, with customers, office type settings with clients, remote workers via Zoom, uh, leadership. 
Leadership is a great theme to capture in your shoots. And at 500px, we love themes of leadership. And uh, what you need to ask yourselves, not only for, for leadership, but you can do this for all other concepts, is what does leadership in the workplace look like today versus 20 years ago? And that can be your starting point in brainstorming your ideas. Sorry. Uh, so, you know, preparing for an interview, like we saw in the video, this makes for a relatable content idea. You know, think about how to craft a story from start to end, searching for the job, making the CV, uh, dressing, getting ready, and then finally participating in the interview. And um, as we get to the travel portion, we just wanted to remind everyone, this is really important, um, about the importance of knowing the laws in the countries and cities that you were shooting in. Uh, do not assume that all places you visit are open and supportive of the LGBTQ plus community. Educate yourself, have a plan, consider spaces that you all feel most safe in. Um, and of course, uh, a hot trend right now is staycations. So if you're not able to or, you know, you don't have the ability, um, availability to travel often, you can still hone in on this trend by considering staycations and, and local travel. And of course, uh, planning and packing for vacation. Um, you know, we all do that. Um, that's a great one. Uh, sightseeing and tourist attractions. Um, if you've been a contributor for a fair amount of time, you may have come across things like licensing IP or intellectual property right issues. Tourist type and, you know, well-known landmarks or temples are things that we cannot accept licensing, but there are tons of ways around that. You can revisualize vacationing in very creative ways. And if you ever have questions or want to learn more about that, you can uh, visit our 500px blog. You can search travel and licensing, and you'll probably find, you know, tons of articles on what to avoid, uh, creative solutions. Um, and you can also join our 500px discord and ask questions and we can we'll be happy to help you in there. Um, and here we have some great photos, um, really great vacationing photos make me want to go on vacation. And then uh, on the lower uh, left, we actually have a great shoot from Winnie Bruce. So this is a single mom uh, from the LGBTQ community, and uh, she's on her way to her, her uh, acupuncturist job. And of course, Winnie followed her throughout her day of work, and it was just really real and relatable. It was really a great shoot to see. Ah, uh, milestones and celebrations. Okay, so this is my favorite type of content. Um, there's this really beautiful diversity, but also a universal nature that makes this type of um, content really great for licensing. Uh, you can have diversity through cultural celebrations at 500px. We love seeing um, content representing Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Holly, Chinese New Year, just to name a few. But some celebrations also have a universal element, such as graduations, birthdays, anniversaries. So, um, you know, this type of content is great to keep in the back of your mind if the opportunity presents itself. And um, again, it's important to include diversity in these concepts. Oftentimes, there's a barrier between the LGBTQ community and maybe their religious or spiritual background. Um, but we do see some institutions um, initiating change and being more accepting. And religion still may remain a constant in some of the members of the LGBTQ plus community's lives. Also, uh, family and friends being in each other's presence um, may not be an option for everyone, but chosen family can be. And of course, another favorite of mine are like mini milestones that occur in families and um, adult lives, like a child losing first two, taking first steps. We typically see these represented um, through heterosexual couples um, in the media, but they can and should be represented by more diverse family types. Um, so here we see a lot of happy, uplifting um, content. We love the 58 on the cake with a little bit of cake on the man's uh, upper lip. Um, these are all very beautiful. Okay. Uh, and so we're nearing the end of mine and Devin's part. Just to kind of wrap up, we wanted to close on some notes about titling and keywording. Uh, these are terms that you see that um, are not necessarily appropriate for titles and keyworking, keywording. But they are terms that you as a photographer may come across while speaking with your models and asking them for their information and pronouns. So it's good to be familiar with them. Um, and that way, when you are talking with your models, you guys are kind of speaking the same language. 
Um, so we have uh, sexual orientation. Um, that is the emotional or physical attraction or non-attraction to other people. Um, that kind of includes the labels of gay, lesbian, heterosexual, bisexual, pansexual, asexual. Gender identity is a person's internal identification as male, female, or not something in between, something other than the two conventional uh, gender options. And gender expression is how individuals communicate their gender to others, typically through their um, clothing, speech, mannerisms or other facets of their personality. And uh, now we have uh, some terms. These are not all the identities and terms used by the LGBTQ community, but they are the more popular ones that we see and we want to touch on. Uh, so first off, LGBTQ is an acronym. And um, what we see a lot is contributors using this on all their content that they're shooting. So um, say you were shooting a lesbian couple or a non-binary person, we see the LGBTQ plus uh, kind of slapped on it. And it's not the most accurate way to present your content. LGBTQ plus should be reserved for groups where multiple identities are being represented. And kind of what ends up happening is the collection becomes a little diluted and it'll be harder for your content content to surface. So keep that in mind. Um, and then we have some other um, terms, uh, transgender, non-binary, uh, describes a person whose gender identity falls outside of the two gender constructs, male or female, and bisexual. Uh, we did talk about this earlier, describes a person who's attracted to both men and women. And uh, just some best practices on keywording and titling. Um, use keywords that your model has approved. <laughs> we cannot say that enough. Have conversations with your uh, with your models. As a photographer, you can respectfully ask your models for their pronouns and how they would like to be identified. Describe a model's gender, identity, sexual orientation, age, and ethnicity. These are all things that you're going to see in the licensing workflow. And don't forget your location. Uh, we talked about adding different layers um, to your content. So location is another layer, and that can really help you help your content surface more. And being accurate is the best way. Avoid keywords like cross, cross dresser by curious. And of course, um, as I mentioned, use the LGBTQ plus when you're shooting uh, larger groups. And uh, here we just have some examples of um, how we would uh, title and keyword um, a photo. So this uh, photo was by uh, Caitlin Sawyer. She photographed a beautiful family at Christmas. Uh, we titled it Transgender Man with Wife and Teen at Christmas. And some of the keywords are uh, literal keywords, such as horizontal, family. There's three people. You see a mature man, mature woman, transgender. And then you also have more conceptual, so like celebration, love, bonding. Um, and conceptual keywords are kind of... Um, Keywords that allow people to resonate more with the actions happening in the content and reflect on what's happening, think more creatively about the photo. So it's good to have a balance of both conceptual and literal keywords. And lastly, uh, we have um, another example, a gay couple caring for their houseplants. And again, for keywords, horizontal, two people, um, gay, adult men, Caucasian, literal. And then we have things like growth, home gardening, care, daily life, and of course, the location. Okay, and now we're passing things off to Kyle. Uh, Kyle is a long term, long time 500px contributor and our feature panelist today. We are very grateful to have him here today and uh, to speak about his professional and personal experiences. So we're going to pass this off to you, Kyle. It's all yours. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Coleman. Um, I am a Las Vegas based photographer. Um, I grew up in the Midwest um, and actually started photography a little late. So I've been a professional photographer for about five or six years now. Um, I actually got into photography while working on cruise ships. So my throw into photography was uh, a lot of travel photography, a lot of different cultures, um, a lot of different parts of the world. Um, so it was a really great learning experience. Um, being able to dive right into that from the get. Um, I started with knowing my surroundings, um, knowing who to ask, where to go. Um, but yeah, and since then I have been in Las Vegas um, and I have been doing a lot of portrait photos, lifestyle photos. Um, I've been working with 500px for, I believe, almost four years now. 
um, doing a lot of licensing for um, uh, various different uh, briefs that they have um, and working alongside them to bring some like fun content that's representative of what they're looking for. So, so um, the first thing I want to talk about in my experience um, is how to find models uh, and couples in the LGBTQIA plus queer community. Um, I get a lot of people, especially coming from a small Midwest town that um, want to expand their portfolios with uh, representation and diversity. Um, but at the end of the day, depending on where you live and your surroundings, it might be a little difficult. So the first thing that I would say is gonna be the easiest is look for the people that are closest to you. Um, I mean, at this point, most people have someone who is queer, gay in their lives, if they know. Um, and so reach out to them, see if they want to participate, make them comfortable. Um, I always say that when you're looking for diversity, when you're looking for representation, offer free shoots. Um, don't, don't charge, make sure that they know like, hey, you know, I want to give these great photos to you. Um, I would love to see you in an everyday life. Um, I think that that's, that's a really big one when you're first starting out, trying to build your portfolio with um, a lot of diversity in it. I think that definitely um, what Logan had said and Devin had said about authentically casting, I think that, you know, we see it all the time where people do mock-up weddings, they do mock-up engagements. That's great. That's wonderful. Make sure that those people are queer. Make sure that those people, you know, they don't have to be a couple. You know, sometimes, you know, in a small Midwest town or, you know, in the South or wh wherever you are, um, you might not have uh, a couple that um, are actually together. You might not know people who, who or you might know more LGBTQIA plus people that are single at the moment. That's fine. Make sure that, you know, always check up on how comfortable they are. Uh, if they're going to be okay with it. Um, even, you know, I've gone to making, meeting up for coffee, making sure that they, you know, are able to chat with each other. You're able to chat with them. Um, I think that that's a huge thing. Um, I started modeling first uh, for about uh, when I was 15. And so I will say that from the transition from model into photographer, the biggest key is comfortability with your models. Um, and I think that that stems through all, all um, facets of photography, because if your models aren't comfortable, no matter if they're uh, queer or straight or, you know, diverse, what eth ethnicity they are, um, you're not going to get those authentic photos that you're looking for. So then um, moving into getting into those images. So I think that a huge thing to remember and keep in the back of your mind is that uh, LGBTQIA plus queer representation in photos doesn't necessarily, uh, necessarily look any different than what you're already seeing. I think that keeping that natural, keeping those photos authentic in the sense of, you know, maybe you've seen a amazing ad for a grocery store that is a, a heterosexual couple, try it on, a, you know, a, a queer couple. Build that uh, scene just like you would in those other images. Um, I think that that's the biggest thing is, is that in media today, the, the gay community, the lesbian community, trans, uh, non-binary, um, bisexual, we, it, it's looked as different. We're, we're being forced to look, be looked at as different. Um, and I think that through your photography, through your images that you're portraying that make it look like everyday life, that it, uh, that it some, somehow instills in other people who might not be well uh, versed with uh, a queer child or um, a gay couple or anything like that, that, um, there's not, there's not that much difference. And I think that that's the biggest thing, especially through uh, media and advertisement and campaigns these days is um, the offset of, well, they're different. We're, we're pushing the, the queer agenda 
Um, and really it's not, we're just opening that diversity up uh, to the same exact photos that you see and have seen for your entire life. They just are showing different people now, showing people that are here in your community, in your hometown, in your city or state, um, and they're just being represented. You know, I think that, you know, going along with making sure that everything is authentic, like how Devin Head spoke about um, the rainbow flag. You know, a lot of people want to uh, make sure that you know in this photo that there is a gay person, there is, there is a queer representation in it. And I think that at the end of the day, um, thinking about your models, thinking about how comfortable they are, I think that, you know, most people, um, or you would want your, your models to be proud of who they are. So they don't need a representation of, of, uh, a flag or, you know, a, anything that is too drastic that, that makes them stand out because, you know, they have probably stood out their entire lives. And so we're wanting them to see these images and make them feel exactly at home, make them feel like their neighbors like the people they went to school with, like the people that they work with, um, and show them just how beautiful uh, that that connection is, that that intertwining in everybody else's life. And I think through that as well, um, it will also help the exterior see that there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I definitely think that going back on what Logan said about location, um, I think that it is very, very important to realize, even in the United States, um, but outside of the United States, that they are in a safe environment for themselves, whether that be in their household with their family or out on the street. If you're taking photos in public, um, make sure, you know, I have, as a model and photographer, coming from a small town in Indiana, sometimes uh, it can be a little nerve wracking. Um, you know, you want to double check, you know, I always, uh, before a shoot, I always have, you know, two, three locations thought up, maybe have a backup plan. If for some reason you mentioned something and they're like, oh, I had a bad experience here. Make sure that you can be like, you know what, don't even worry about it because we, we have this, you know, thinking ahead and on top of everything to make sure that that model, that that couple, that that family is safe and secure is going to make them feel so much more at home. Um, so I definitely think that that is, that is first and foremost, my biggest, um, biggest thought before going into a, a issue is, are, are we going to be safe? Are they going to feel comfortable? Because again, like I said, if they're feeling uncomfortable, whether it be in public or not in public, um, you're not going to get those authentic photos anyway, even if they are safe. So make sure that that everyone is comfortable. Make sure that everyone is on the same page. Um, don't spring anything on your models. Um, and you know, go with the flow. You know, if they are um, saying like, "Yeah, like let's move over here." I've always thought about about traveling here. You know, that's the play off of them. Um, I think that it's also a big um, idea to keep in mind that as much as like they've said, um, Logan and, and Devin, that you don't want to be overly uh, sexualizing. Um, you also don't want to be scared to be letting them hug or kiss. I mean, I think that that is a huge thing too, is, is that it's very taboo or passe to for um, queer and uh, LGBTQIA plus community to show affection in public. And I think that making sure that that... Um, that that mindset is is kind of erased, I think will also help expand what diversity and images you see through all of these works, through these campaigns. I mean, I can't imagine the first the first time that I saw um, a gay couple kiss on TV or in an ad. Um, it's it's small and it is still intimate, um, but it makes a difference showing affection as well because we don't want to show, our community, um, a diverse um, community that it's not okay to be affectionate in public um, or in private, wherever they are. So, and then uh, lastly, how to build trust and diversity through your work moving forward. Um, I think that it is a big, big thing to think about when you are posting on social media, when you 
for a business if they have a campaign, um, if you are doing advertisement that have queer representation, you stick by them. I have a lot of friends who have shot me and my husband or have uh, shot other other lesbian couples or queer couples and they see their engagement go down. They see uh, people c- comments. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies right now that are getting a lot of flack for showing diversity. Um, and that really spe- is specific towards the, the queer community. Um, and I think that it's so important to show the community that you're not just um, maybe putting their images for clout, that you truly stand by this community, uh, you represent it as an ally or through the community. Um, because that's that's also such a huge thing is seeing people's work when you're going through photos, um, when you're going to a company. If I see, um, you know, a gay couple that is... Uh, in the window of a storefront, I'm going to be so much more inclined to feel comfortable walking in rather than if, you know, a company, you know, is, is repping and then they get flack for it. So they start removing images or removing videos. Um, and then it kind of makes you question if they had, um, the right intention with it. Um, so I definitely think that that is a huge thing when building trust through your models, through your clients, um, and then also through your work. I mean, you want to be transparent. You want to be honest. um, And I think that you also, at the end of the day, as an artist, want to grow. And the only way that you can grow is by expanding your mind, expanding your, your physical lens of seeing stuff that might be outside of your comfort zone out of your um, hometown and what you're used to. And also too, I I could have talked about this in the beginning, but never be uh, afraid to make a mistake. You know, um, if you misgender someone, um, it's okay. Apologize, recoup from it. You know, there, you don't need to, uh, to be scared going into a new situation with, with a community. You know, we are here to learn and to teach and to grow. And so, you know, going into it, obviously always ask, ask questions. That's always going to be the best thing. Um, And, you know, throughout that time, um, if a mistake happens, apologize and move on, you know, make sure that you've clocked it for the next time, for the next couple, for the next session, for whatever that is, and just learn and build upon that. It's really well said. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to open it up to uh, the Q&A section right now. Uh, I know we have a few questions. Um, One question we have is uh, how, you know, do we see the LGBTQ uh, plus content uh, kind of going forward in the future and also with relation to you know, certain countries refusing uh, or denying uh, LGBTQ plus content and the rights. I know that speaking from like the 500 PX perspective, I think, you know, uh, the numbers that we're seeing in representation and people like wanting to be seen and seeing more diverse stories is that, you know, this is a growing uh, and progressing kind of story. It's um, something that is uh, developing with time and, um, it like, I think is only going to grow more and more. And while, you know, above all else, we want people to be safe regardless of what country they're in. If something is, uh, you know, considered illegal or unallowed uh, there, like we still want people to be safe um, in their shoots. But uh, this is the kind of content that I think, you know, will be uh, more popular within commercial licensing more and more over time. Uh, But Kyle, how do you, kind of feel about that yeah i mean i i've i I don't know statistics specifically but the queer community um throughout you know the united states is growing it's it's ever growing and i think that until we match the content that we see for heterosexual couples for straight for straight couples for straight people for what is wish what is shown there you know um and we are 50-50 or whatever that is. I mean, y- you are in a um, in a community or an area that is predominantly 
you know, one ethnicity or one sexuality, and yet you only see, you know, a small portion of it. I mean, we won't stop working and we won't be done working until that representation is, is even, is equal. Um, I think, yes, through different countries, it's hard. Um, I've shot in Russia. Um, I have done photo shoots in Ukraine. Um, it is, it is a small step, um, to be proud that I've shot there, um, that I've shot queer couples there, um, but it is also a dangerous thing. So, you know, as much as it's great, I mean, Europe is huge. Um, Scandinavia is, is wonderful. Um, you know, and through different countries, unfortunately, it's, a, it's also a political game where, you know, as long as we can try and show those people, it's okay to be you, we're going to show you. And, you know, that also comes with, um, our art here, our work here in the United States, you know, uh, shoot more, um, different ethnicities, like, 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 um, or, uh, religious backgrounds, like you guys have said, you know, show those, depict those, because I mean, the United States is full of diversity with religion and culture. And so, you know, it's okay to bring that in because someone along the line is going to see it on online. They're going to see it on social media and they're going to say, that looks like me. It might not be in the same country. They might not even know, but they're going to say that looks like me and they're going to be okay with who they are. So I think that that's really, Unfortunately, step by step is the only way to go at this point. Um, and I think we're doing a great job. I think that, you know, again, not backing down, you know, companies are going to take hits with money and with, you know, people, but I mean, our generations, the newer generations, they're not taking any crap. And so they're going to push these, uh, you know, this diversity and these lifestyles, these livings so that everybody is fully comfortable. That's beautifully said. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I really feel that. That that's amazing. Uh yeah, I hope that that's a, a great answer. And um another question we got was, you know, what is the strongest point from a picture uh when you're photographing LGBTQ content? So, you know, is it the relation itself? Um, you touched on how important it is to show um romance, to show connection. Or maybe it's the history of how the relation started and maybe that kind of gets into like um, uh, everyday life and kind of um, um, everyday interactions like in the house or going on a date or that sort of thing. And honestly, I say both. Both are great. One um, we see a lot more of. Um, than the other. So, you know, just from our point of view, mine and Devin's, it's what we can educate our contributors in um, creating content that has a little bit of a gap. So we can, you know, expand everyone's horizons. We can create a little bit of enormity of the things that we see. But um, again, I like what you said, Kyle, um, romance is, is 100% okay. And, you know, it should be celebrated. And you touched on that perfectly as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like a, fu I think it's funny to think about too, that you see a uh... Uh, a straight couple holding hands, you don't really think of it as intimacy. Um, but with uh, different different communities, it's looked at uh, and sexualized a lot more. And I think that you we have to destigmatize that that sexuality that comes along with other communities showing affection to each other. I think that that's a huge thing. Thank you. Uh, someone else is asking, this is specifically for Kyle, uh, what type of gear do you use and if you have any kind of lens recommendations? So I am a Nikon boy. Um, so I have a, a D750 and a D850. Um, I usually use a 35 millimeter. Um, I just got an 85, um, which I love as well. Um, I love an 85. <laughs> Yes, I, I love an 85 and then a 50. I guess obviously it depends on what type of, of photography you're doing, um, if you're doing wide lens, um, but I am more uh, prone to portraits. So definitely those tighter shots, um, I think beautiful. I wanna depict emotion. So I'm not really shooting too far out um, unless it is you know, a, a silhouette or a body shape. Um, but I, yes, I love, uh, 85 is great. A 35 is also great, especially for, um, newer photographers. 
Um, a 35 lens is like relatively easy to use. Um, it's a, more on the inexpensive side, um, but will still give you those super clean images. I agree. I think that like, you know, 35 is great for like uh, getting into it and like kind of it's versatile. You can do a lot of stuff with it. And then 85, I just love that shallow depth of field and how yep. uh, intimate it actually feels. Um, I agree. Uh, we got another question. Um, uh, what, I guess like uh, someone is asking about uh, whether, you know, how, what, how do we feel about, you know, whether it's legal or ethical for, uh, you know, for non LGBTQ plus people uh, to pose or act as LGBTQ plus couples for a photo shoot, the way that uh, non queer actors do act as queer actor characters within a film. Um, I think we kind of touched on this within the presentation a bit. Uh, well, it's not, you know, it's not illegal to do that and uh, ethical, you know, that's up to a person to decide, but uh, we do always try and encourage, um, you know, authentic casting. And this is because it really adds uh, not just value to the photo, but the authentic, with the authentic casting, with someone actually portraying, you know, what they're comfortable with, um, it's just going to be more natural. It's going to be more true to the model. And that's going to come through in the content usually. Um, it just, it, it's what models and subjects are usually able to exemplify above all else is what's true to themselves. Um, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that, yes, it's always going to be better to find someone in the community. Um, and yeah, it is, it, as, much, as much as it's not illegal, um, you're not going to most likely get those authentic images through that physical embodiment or depending on what you're, what you're trying to get. You know, I, um, but I, I also think that it's funny. I mean, I've shot heterosexual wedding couples with my best friend. Um, I think too, that if you think about it, um, if, if some, if you, this is all your, um, you're given is in your, in your small town, you have a few friends who are comfortable with themselves. Um, if they're allies, if they um, appreciate the community, if they, you know, um, stand by the community, I don't necessarily think that anybody is going to uh, look down upon you for trying to represent something through your art. Um, not everyone is uh, given a good community, a good queer community around them. Um, and so if you're not able to find those authentic models or couples, um, make sure that what you're doing doesn't feel um, fake, if that makes sense. Yes, that does. I think, I think so, definitely. Um, we have another question for Kyle. Uh, you, you do self-portraits uh, and you include your husband. Um, how do you go about setting up those self-portraits? Like what's your methods there? Oh my goodness. Um, it kind of just depends on what my crazy brain is thinking. Um, he is my biggest muse and also probably my biggest critic. Um, so I usually have a tripod um, depending on where we are. Um, I have done self timer on my camera, but I, tend to like my remote more. So my Nikon, I can still have uh, a wireless digital remote. Um, I can get quicker photos, I think, um, because I shoot with all of my uh, sessions, I shoot really quickly. Um, and so I don't like the three second timer and then having to wait again and then having to wait again. I also feel that when you're doing self portraits, um, the remote is better to focus um, because I feel like with the timer, if you move off just a little bit, but with the, mm. uh, it's out of focus, but when you use the remote, you can kind of dictate a little bit more when it focuses and then when it takes the picture. Um, but it also to it, it all depends on your space. I mean, if you're doing like, I shot those, um, the, I don't know if anyone saw the photo, uh, of me and my husband painting, uh, a wall at my, my old home. Um, it was very shallow. So, you know, you have to either um, rig your camera so that it's angled at the right way, or sometimes like, I, I don't know how many times I've tried to like set my tripod up on the bed or somewhere. You just have to make sure 
that it's, it's stable, but you know, you have to play around with it and it's fun. And the nice thing about self portraits and the nice thing about uh, self couple portraits is that you can experiment and play so that you kind of know in your brain what you might want to do with your models. Um, I think that that's a huge thing as well is, is knowing um, from, from the time that you start that, Hey, I've already tried this. This is going to look amazing. You know, it's going to give them that confidence rather than being like, well, you know, and most, most models won't care if you're just trying things, but it's always better to come out with those really awesome images right away so that everybody gets hyped and really excited for the rest of the shoot. Awesome. Yes, Thank testing you. and experimenting. Yeah, I think we've probably all done that. That's, yeah, great. And the best thing about those self-portraits is that you don't have to show anyone. Any exactly. Else, but, uh, exactly. You don't want to exactly. show anyone. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Kyle, for joining us today. Uh, that's really all the time we have for the Q&A. And thank you, everyone, who sent in uh, questions. Uh, those were all really great questions. Uh, we're going to be making uh, the webinar available to, uh, to view online, as well as this uh, deck we've gone through with this information and all the great photos throughout uh, for download. Um, and there's also just a few references for some of the sources and metrics that we've presented. And then also uh, links to all the great photographers whose photos have been featured throughout the presentation. Uh, so be sure to download this and check out uh, all of their great profiles on 500px. Um, but yes, uh, thank you again, Kyle. Uh, this has yes. been a joy. Of course. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and thank you, Logan. Um, all right, uh, hopefully we will be seeing everyone again in the future for our next 500px in focus webinar. All right, have a great uh, rest of your day, everyone. Bye everyone, thank you. Bye.